Testing one, two, testing one, two. Let me know if everybody can hear me. I'm going to put the slide up in a minute. <laughs> Wonderful. Let me know if you see this. Everything excellent. Very good. I'll be right back. Hello everyone and welcome to Temple of Online Trader Central. I want to show everyone of you the front page today. Uh, we want to thank again each and every one of you. That was a voice earlier of Mr. Armo, our host presenter. And we'll be starting promptly in just about a minute. Again, this is Online Trader Central. I want to welcome each and every one of you. Uh, Paul Lang is also here with us today. Again, this is Online Trader Central, your host and presenter, Melissa Armo. And with that, let's begin. Percussion, drummers, are you ready? <laughs> Okay, and now to the trumpet. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome a host and presenter for today. Please welcome from the stockswish.com. Please welcome. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you, everyone at Online Trader Central. Welcome. My name is Melissa Armo. Some of you already know me. And I own a company called The Stocks, which for those of you that do not. And we're going to talk today about trading on the side of institutional money and how if you do this, you can make substantial gains in the market. Some people get into trading because they want to do it for a living. Some people do it because they want to make extra money. The reason that I initially started out as a day trader was because I wanted to change careers. And you really can make great money in the market if you know what to do. It's one of these very specific types of things, and we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about how if you know and can pinpoint the side of power money in the market, because that's really what institutional money is, you can earn a very good living. I want to point out the rainbow here. I actually took this picture from my phone. Isn't that fantastic? This is, this is, a, this is the Hudson River. So beautiful rainbow here, springtime in New York. If you have any questions, you can email me at melissa at the stockswish.com and you can feel free to ask me questions as we go along here today. I have the box window down in the corner. I'm going to be flipping back and forth. You can also call me at 929-3200 GAP and I encourage you to go to YouTube and subscribe. I put a lot of webinars and a lot of market updates and plays of the days on YouTube. That's probably the best social media site to follow me on. So many of you are here today because you have no idea what to do with your trading. But some of you are here today because you are looking to make more money. And 
the 300,000 was in the title of the webinar today because a lot of people say, wait a minute, what is the amount of money that could sustain me and a family of maybe two kids in say even New Jersey, New York, or wherever you live in the country in the US, or if you live outside of the US, a lot of people need to make a certain standard of living in order to support their families. And some people are falling short of that in the last few years due to the economy. You can trade for a living if you want, or you can trade the market. The strategy I trade, which I'm gonna talk about, actually only happens in the beginning of the period of the day. So between 9.30 and 10, you can trade this strategy and be done and still do another job. So if you have income goals, and in the last few years you're not achieving them, you might wanna think about something else. You have to think about if you're earning really what you're worth, meaning can you continue sustaining and giving out XYZ amount of energy to a company, for example, and not really getting the payoff. Maybe you're not getting the raises you deserve. I don't know, whatever your situation is. But if you're in a situation where you need to make more money between now and the end of 2016, you still have time. Why? It's only May. You've got a good seven months left in the year. And if you're falling far behind, shy a little bit of your income goals, you've got to look at saying, how can I ramp it up? Maybe I can do something else. That something else could be a part-time job, or it could be something like trading the market. It only sets up in the first half an hour of the day. If I don't take a trade by 10 a.m., I'm not in the trade in the day. And I always say to people, you know, how committed are you to your financial future right now for the rest of the calendar year? Are you committed? Sometimes what happens is people start out, they have their New Year's resolutions, they have their goals, then the year starts out, it's into February, March, they're falling short of their goals, and then they kind of just give up. Well, there's seven months of the year left. You don't have to give up. You still have plenty of time to turn your situation around if you're not making the money that you want to this calendar year in 2016. I mean, you gotta ask yourself, like, are you in control? Do you feel like you're in control of your own financial destiny? Or do you feel like it is out of your control? Are you in control of your own financial situation? And are you really at the point where you say, wait a minute, I'm not maximizing my own true potential. I could be doing something else. And oftentimes it comes back to what do you believe? What do you believe you're worth? What do you believe you're worth? And do you believe that you can make more money? Well, making $300,000 a year in the market is possible. It's actually not that much money when you look overall about the money that flows to the market. It comes out to be about 25 grand a month. So if you break it up, and we're going to talk about this today, it ends up being with size a few trades. And we're going to talk about something I call chunking it out. Once you know how to make money, the amount you make is simply a function of what you risk. So you determine what you want to risk. That gets you to the goal of how much you want to make. You back it off. Most traders think that this number is only attainable trading for hours every day, but that's not true. Again, I'm saying it's a very specific time period. This is where the institutional money comes into play. Institutions take positions on or off into the open. So if you catch those moves with the power of money, then you have the capability of making the money that you need without sitting in front of the computer until four o'clock every day, which I don't do, okay? The idea of trading all day is not the way to do it. That's not the way to make this kind of money in the market. And we're gonna talk here about how it's just about a couple of trades. So $300,000, it sounds like a lot of money because maybe you've never made this much money in your life. But actually, if you look at it as a whole, break it down, again, I call it chunking it out, per train per week, per month, it's very doable. I just talked to the trading room about this actually this morning, and I said, you know what, I'm working on a sheet that I'm gonna give everyone, it's a goal sheet. And I never thought of this before, because I have this for myself in my mind, but I never really wrote it out for the room people and my traders, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna give them an actual goal sheet. You write it down, this is how you do it. This is above and beyond the gap worksheet that I give everyone who does the class. Once, when you think of chunking it out and breaking it down, then it becomes doable. You look at this big number, you say, oh gosh, Melissa, you know, woo, it sounds like crazy. But it's not if you look at the overall broad market and how many stocks trade and how much money flows to the market every day, which is billions of dollars. And then for you to do it personally and pull this money out of the market, it's very realistic if you break it down per trade, per week, per month, okay? It comes out to be about six grand a week if you're looking at 50 weeks a year. And there's 52 weeks in a year, but then there's holidays. Like I don't train the week between Christmas and New Year. And there's times that the market is obviously closed. You can Google it if you want to see the days the NASDAQ is closed. 
but it's approximately $1,200 a day if you look at it like that. I look at it even more of a different perspective, which I'm going to show you here. I look at it as, again, per week or even per month for myself. But if, if it helps you to look at it per day, it's $1,200 a day. So you could take 1,000 shares of something, 1,500 shares of something. The stock can move $1.50. Boom, you're out. That's it. it. It's the amount of share size. Again, we're going to talk about that in reference to the risk. And here you can see. So, I mean, this is an average, but I'm usually looking about a dollar move in the stocks that I'm trying to get into or make, unless they're very cheap. So, a dollar twenty times the share size of a thousand is twelve hundred dollars profit. Sixty cents, if something moves sixty cents, which we're going to look at some trades today that did only move sixty cents, didn't move a buck. Two thousand shares would be what? Twelve hundred dollars. Thirty cents, four thousand shares, twelve hundred dollars. Usually the size that I'm taking out, the advanced level I'm trading now for eight years, is between three and and four and five thousand on most stocks. Now there are some very cheap stocks that I trade that I will take ten thousand shares or more. And yet there are also some very, very expensive stocks that are over a hundred dollars that I will take, you know, far less than two thousand shares. So it depends on the price of the stock, and then it depends on the size, but you're looking for the move. That tells you the move times the share size for the money you make. But if in your mind, mentally, you know this is the this is the goal, the monetary goal, and you break it out, this is how you hit the mark. This is how you hit the 300K, okay? And, and, and it, this is like common sense. Common sense tells you that many stocks with volume move in the market at least a buck a day. Even more that move only 50, 60 cents, and even more that only move, you know, 25, 30 cents a day. I mean, you could Google almost anything to see that stocks move, you know, 30 cents. So you have to conceptually think about it. And again, these moves are likely. They happen every day. They happen every single day. Now let's look at one here. This is Target. Target, a well-known company. Everybody knows it. In fact, uh, there's a lot of retail stocks, companies that are having earnings out this week. This is a daily chart. For those of you that have never traded before, this is a daily chart. So every bar here depicts the, a trading day calendars down here of what's happening in Target. Now, I trade a strategy that is based on looking for what institutions are doing. How do I know what stock to trade? I figure it out before 9.30. And if I figure it out before 9.30, I'm good to go so that by the time the open hits at 9.30, I know to take the trade and I get in the trade and, and I can make money quickly in that 30 minutes. Now, what happened here? This stock opened here in the morning, approximately 76 something. I'm going to show you here the day before where it was. Now, this had an earnings. up. It was up here, okay? So the night before, it closed like at 79-something, I think it was. The next day, it, it was much lower when it opened at 930. There's something called pre-market data that you can see in a chart. And if you have a chart, you set it up. I'm not showing this here, but you can look at it. And then it, you could see the stock is actually much lower all of a sudden now in the morning, it could be 8 o'clock in the morning, whenever, whenever time you're looking at your chart, and you see it's much lower. I have a method to determine what institutions are going to do with it. Are they going to buy Target that day or sell it? And that's how you know what direction to take the trade and you're looking for it, okay? Now, this is a five-minute chart. You can trade on an intraday chart that's a one-minute, two-minute, or five minutes. I really prefer the one-minute chart, but Target had a good setup here on a five-minute chart on this day. So we're off the daily chart. We're now in a five minute. So this is how you're taking the position. We were talking about your goal. Your goal is to get a move in target. Dollar twenty, sixty cents, whatever it is. That's what your goal is. You're trying to get. Here is the short in the target. So you would have rated this gap, looked at it, and said, what am I doing? I'm looking for to determine if an institution is going to sell the stock in target or buy the stock in target. Well, my system, the class I teach, the method that I devise for myself tells you, wow, this is a short. So then you will short the stock on selling action from the institutions, okay? Does everyone get this? And, and feel free to ask questions. I'm looking in the box. I'm not seeing any questions. But if anyone has questions, you can ask me. So here's where you want to enter the position, and here's the drop, okay? And here's the open, actually, where you get the confirmation of the sell-off right hand here of the open in, in Target. So the entry was 76.69. When you short it, you will put a stop. What does this mean? The stop means 
that if it goes over that price, you won't lose any more money than that. You will get hit out of the trade right there. If you take 5,000 shares of this, your risk on this would be what? Approximately 1,050. So this amount needs to be the same or close to the same for every trade. If your goal is to make 300K a year, you're going to want to risk about this amount. Everyone follow me. Now, in this case here, you see the stock moved almost 70 cents. And if you had taken the trade, you could have made 3,450 bucks. It actually went past that. I'm going to go back here. It actually went further, but the target really was 76. It kept dropping. It kept dropping in here and actually kept dropping the next day down. Okay. Anyone have any questions about this? I know for those of you that are brand new to trading, you might not understand what I mean. This is what I teach in the class, but the general concept is that you would see Target in the pre-market before the U.S. stock market opens at 930, and you would determine that institutions are going to sell it before the market opens to know to watch the chart into this period here in the morning to take the trade. Does that make sense? Let me go back here. I didn't miss any of those questions today. Okay. So let's keep going. Now, going back to what I was saying, you're looking for a sell-off if you're shorting. We're going to go over a long here in a little bit. If you're going, looking to go long, you will buy the stock. But in the case of Target, you're looking to short. And I actually prefer to short. For many, many people that know me, I prefer to short. I've always preferred to short. I think selling action happens much faster in stocks versus people that choose to buy because there's panic that comes into a stock in selling action. All right? Now, how much money you make is going back to what I was saying. It depends on the money that you risk, okay? And that's determined by the amount of shares you take based on the entry point in the stock. Like I was showing you, 69 by 90, all right? And so if you're looking for a target of 76, the whole number, you're saying, okay, I can make approximately 69 cents, 70 cents. If it goes past the target, I might make a dollar. It did go past the $76 target. You learn all this in the class, but all of this is based on something called advanced technical analysis, which is how you read price action in charts. Okay, so what you're trying to do is find one good trade a day like that, like the target. You can, you can do other trades if you want to, but I find that you make more money and are more consistent and trade better if you take only one trade a day or at the most two. Because once that money is there, say you make over $3,000 in Target, you've got your goal in for the day. Two trades like that a week, boom, you are on your way to making $300,000 a year. So you only need two Targets a week, and there's five days in the week you can trade. Do you follow me? So again, it is about chunking it out. How do you know what to watch Target? Or how do you know what to watch any stock specifically on any day? Because, because of the strategy I'm looking for that is pinpointing the institutional positioning. Okay, so it's really following the big money. Big money, institutional money funds the big boys, and, and that really means what? It means people that are running hedge funds, people that are running running banks, okay? People that are, are taking big positions in the market that have millions and millions of shares that move stocks. I mean, you, you, everyone's here has heard of Apple. Okay. That's a well-known traded stock. You know, lots of banks and hedge funds are in, in Apple. They're invested in Apple. Some might be shorted, some might be long it, but that's what I mean. For example, a stock that's heavily traded and I always trade stocks at a volume. Okay. So we're talking about banks, institutions that take big positions. All right. They take large positions and they move the stocks. And whether they get in it for the long term or the short term, it doesn't matter. We are looking to do it on the day. I'm a day trader. So, so what I'm teaching you is how to day trade in and out quickly on a one-minute chart. All I'm doing is following the move that that institution is going to make on that any given day. I might be in a trade for two minutes, one minute, three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes. That's it. And then I'm out. If, if in the long term, Apple, for example, or the target, let's go back to target. If in the long term target isn't a short, if the long term target actually is higher, it doesn't matter to me. I can short it on the day and make money and be done and have that money in my account and be flat it completely with the profits, even if the stock rallies and ends up making a new high in, in a week or a month from now. 
The nice thing about day trading is you don't have to figure out what the institutions are doing in the long term. You absolutely don't. You only have to be right for a couple of minutes. It is about being right for that small, small period of time. And I will tell you, it is far easier, far, far easier to predict what stocks are going to do in the shortest amount of time than in the longest amount of time. And now just think about what I just said here. This is common sense. Common sense tells you uh, if you could predict where something's going to go between now and two minutes from now, or predict where something's going to go between now and two months from now, or predict where something's going to go between now and two years from now, what would you say it's easier predicting between now and two minutes from now? In two years from now, I think it happened. A presidential election, well, we'll be electing a new president in the U.S., which will affect the market somehow, some way. New people will be in charge. We're talking two years out. Nobody knows who's going to get elected. All kinds of things could happen over the world that would change, change the U.S. market. Economic reports. So there's so many things. So looking far out two years from now is more challenging to predict than in two minutes. So that's why day training is great. And, and, and again, the kind of money you can make with it so quickly is fantastic, but you got to take the size. Now, let me look at some questions here. Hold on. Uh, Carrie is saying, is your system based on an indicator? No, it is not based on an indicator. I'll talk about this in a little bit more, Carrie, but I'll just tell you that my system is a self-created system. I made it up myself for myself. I never thought I'd teach anyone. It's based on the daily chart. I just look at a daily chart of the stock and I go over 26 points that are on the daily chart to determine if it's a short or a long. But I'm not looking for a perfect score. I'm looking for 20 points or more. If the stock gaps down, carry and the stock rates 20 points or more, it's a short. If the stock gaps up, carry I'm looking to go in the direction of the gap if it rates 20 points or more. So I'm always looking to go in the direction of the gap but it's got to rate 20 points or more per my 26 point daily chart rating system, which I'll talk about a little bit more, but that's the gist of it. So there isn't an indicator. You're not buying any indicators here. You learn it in the class, you manually do it. I have a worksheet you fill out. And this is what I was talking about. You actually will fill it out in the worksheet. Check, 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 check the ones that you have. Imra wants me to go back about the target. Is that what you want me to go back to here? I gotta watch my time here. Um, are you talking about targets train? And just look here. Amaron, I'm not sure. Hopefully I'm pronouncing your name wrong. He's asking me about this bar, I believe. This is a doji, you're right. Again, I don't I don't call bars by particular names, but there are books out there on candlesticks and he is saying, what are you doing here with this, Melissa? It is a doji, okay? That's not the reason I shorted this here, or, or, or Paul, I think, called this one in the room. Um, anyways, this is not the reason. The reason, I will tell you, is the gap, or you wouldn't do anything with this at all. I mean, so that's number one. The gap tells you in target it's a short. You're not going to look to go long this, although you can see here that some people might have gone long this, and then they got stopped out under the low of the day. But this is a rally that doesn't go anywhere. So it's nothing to do with the doji. Yes, it is one, but sometimes dojis flip. Sometimes dojis drop. So this is a neutral bar. The definition of a doji is neutral. It doesn't have a directional bias. It's flat. So you, you might not know to short it or go long in here with this jiggy here, but it's the idea that the stock couldn't go higher, but it, it is only because of the gap rating i got to be clear on that because you're not going to, first of all, you wouldn't short every doji or go long every doji, and you wouldn't short any uh, rally failure or buy any uh, support hold. It has to be in the overall strategy. That's the gap, which is found on the daily chart, like I said, in the morning. And let me see where we were here. But good questions. You can keep asking the questions. That's fine. Now, here was one, Okay. That I, this was back from two weeks ago now, I think this was, Faye. This was a great one. Again, you're looking for the stock to drop and determine what am I doing with this? Am I going to go long and am I going to short it? it? It was a short. So I rated the gap per my system and it's a short. And here you see it falling and it was a short on the day and the stock kept dropping. 
how did something like this stock? This is a this is a cheap stock, so you can load up a position here with something like this. Again, you're looking to take size, 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 and that's how you're getting the numbers. We make two, three thousand dollars a trade, and sometimes more, and that's how you get this number of twenty-five grand a month. This stock rallied first. So this was a great call because it rallied first, fell, rallied up again, held, and here's the short. But Ultimately, you are looking for the gap in Fay and saying, what is an institution going to do? Are they going to buy it or sell it? And I'm telling you, this is a great call because you might have thought that this was a buy, an institution to buy, because this first bar in the stock, here's the open of the day at 930, is big. It's actually big. It's a big bar. What tells you not to buy this, even though the bar of the day in the open is big? The gap. The gap here. Oops. Hold on. Sorry. This. The gap that happened in, in here right before this is into the open so this is happening pre-market and you rate it and if the rating tells it's a short then you know it's a short and you know what the institutions are going to do if you can't predict that with the gap rating you might have thought to go long this in fact i know traders did i know traders did because the stock rallied fell and broke massively sell off through the low went to a huge target on the day and the first bar was green so you can't you can't you have to know what you're doing with this you have to know what you're doing. And again, this is why this is why people come to me and say, I want to learn how to trade, Melissa. If you don't know what you're doing with the stuff, you want to know whether to buy, pay, or go long it or short it. And if you don't know what to do, you can lose money in the market if you take a trade and you know what to do. So the whole idea of hitting these numbers, these income numbers are what? You become an expert. You become an expert in it. Once you become an expert in it, then you can plop on the size by taking two, three, four, five thousand shares. You can take size and risk $1,000. $1,000 is a lot of money. That's a rent for some people, not in New York, but in many other places, it's a mortgage, okay, in other states. But the point is, though, that that's a lot of money, okay, and you got to know that you're going to be right a high percentage of time. It's about probabilities. Again, this goes back to the common sense mentality. Probabilities tells you high probability, say, is a short on this day. Therefore, you take the trade when it sets up with the risk. How do you know? In the morning, pre-market at 930, you are going to rate it. If it rates 20 points or more as a short, you short it. Or vice versa if you're going long. Okay. So this is a good trade. I'm showing this trade in here because I shorted this here at 1430 with size, 5,000 shares, risk 1,250 bucks, and actually I got out of this, not, not of a target. I got out of the first target, it was a little early. It dropped and broke in here and then went to a bigger number. So you could have made your whole goal for the week in this one trade if you'd held as a target. And it actually kept going. I actually got out of this a little early, but I was so happy with the money I was up in it. And and you never know, they could bounce. And, and, and I got my goal in and I'm done. That's another very important thing. Many, many people don't understand. Wait a minute. You know, what is your goal? If your goal is really make $300,000 a year and you've made your goal and you're up in the trade, it's never over. The fat lady sings. Get out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you have targets and you got to watch them. And there were several targets on this, but this was the first one. It did go to the bigger target, though. It did. And actually, if you held it, you would have made over six grand. This is a nice call. Let me go back here. Yes, it's in the context of the gap. Every single solitary thing that I do always has to do with the gap. When I say I have 100% conviction, I absolutely love this thing. It's all with the gap. These, these entries I'm showing you, these one-minute charts, if, if you said go look at Apple today, go look at this today, go, go look at the market today, Melissa, go look at the, uh, the SPY or whatever, I, if, if it's not gapping, I'm not doing it. If it's not a good gap per my system, I'm not doing it. You can get up in the morning and look at thousands of stocks in the market. Many, many things are completely unplayable. There's many, many things in the day you can't even trade and you won't make any money and you won't be able to figure out what to do to predict them. How am I able to figure out what somebody's going to do to predict them to take it on a one-minute chart between 9.30 and 10 a.m. because of the gap, which I have plenty of time to figure out in the morning before the open. And you can also figure it out at night because stocks gap at night after 4 o'clock when earnings are reporting. There's some stuff tonight. You need to have that strategy intact before you do any trades like this on the one minute chart. Don't start shorting every rally or doji or whatever, or going along every supports. This is another common error for people that are ready trading. I know we have a mixed group tonight. Some people are traders and people are not traders. But the point is that if you're, you know, if you are a trader, you can't do every setup like this on something unless it's a quality gap. They won't all work. I'll tell you right now. I mean, I'm just telling you right now. 
This is trial and an error that I went over this when I figured out my point rating system, the 26 point system, to know what ones I could do these types of setups with. And they don't exist out there all the time on many given days. I only do one trade a day typically, maybe two. You only need one though, and that's what I'm showing you. This is how you get to the number. Okay? So you've got to follow a structure and a system. It's based on the institutional money. I don't know what you're talking about, uh, Amir, and that's about ABC cor correction. I don't, I don't know what you mean by that. I have no idea what you're talking about like that, so the answer is probably no, because I don't know what you mean by that. But I am looking at the context of the gap. I, I, like I was saying, it's about chunking it out, though. Daily, weekly, monthly goals, and this is for me. I think in my mind, chunk it out, chunk it out, chunk it out. There's a girl in the trading room, actually. She's made her goal for the month, she said, in seven days. From now until the rest of the month, she's she's only risking like a quarter percent of what she normally would in a trade to, to keep her goals intact for the month. I mean, I don't do that, but I think that's great, okay? So whatever you need to do, you say you make 25000 the first two weeks of the month. If you want to take the rest of the month off, you can. You've got to wrap your head around it by being reasonable. And being reasonable, being responsible. Two great trades a week. Making 6 k gets you there. You limit your losses and you don't overtrade. And you don't trade when nothing meets your criteria. You stay away. Say you were a big trader and you work for one of the hedge funds that's taking a position. Say you're a trader and you're a trader that works for a hedge fund and, you, and they say, and you say, we're selling this target. It's a piece of junk on the earnings or whatever. You decide that you're selling it. You would have the criteria as a, as a trader, as a professional for the hedge fund for why you're selling it. You wouldn't willy-nilly say, oh, we're just selling target. No, you would have criteria, but the criteria would be based on hedge fund criteria, which is much, much different than what we do. I'm looking at the price action of the gap that's already being created by the hedge fund. But the hedge fund who created the gap in the first place, which might have been at 5 o'clock the night before when the earnings reported on target, for example. I don't remember if target was at night in the morning, but you can go look it up. The point is they may have said, wait a minute, they missed expectations by this much. Therefore, we had our criteria that we are going to sell our position in target this many shares and we're going to exit it because it didn't meet expectations. And see, this is how they figure things out. But that's not how I figure things out. And that's not how you figure things out. And we're not hedge funds, so we don't need to figure things out. And we're not managing millions of millions of shares and positions. Thank goodness. My goodness. I mean, that's, you know, that would be a lot of stress. But this is not that much stress because I'm in and out so quickly. And it's just a couple thousand shares. And I know that's a lot as a day trader, but it's not really. I mean, it's not really. And you get used to it. I've just been doing it for so long now. The idea of only taking 100, 200 shares is foreign to me. Now, let's look at Jack. I'm showing this chart in here because it's long. It's a long, and I called this trade in the room, but I'll tell you, I didn't do it. I didn't do it, but I called it. I saw the entry. Some people did it in the room. Again, as I was saying earlier, I prefer to short stocks. But I'll call long to the room, and every once in a blue moon, I'll go long. But this was a long. It was an earnings gap. So the stock closed the night before the red candlestick here. It sold off on the day. Closed in here around $65. Gapped up. Gapped up here to 72 bucks. What are you going to do with this? Will you get up in the morning and you rate it? Is it a long? Is it a short? Anyways, it had a huge move, okay? Huge move in the day. A stock, let me go back here. A stock cannot close at $65, open at $72. Now, just listen to me here. This is common sense. That's seven bucks differentiation up. Rally on the day. I forget the high of the day. It was almost 76, not quite. But let's just say, for example, here it was 76. Rally on the day, four dollars. So we're talking seven plus four is what? Eleven dollars. Something cannot go the previous day. Okay, close at one number, make a 11 point move into the close of the next day without what? Institutional money moving the stock. We can have a trading room with 5,000 people. We never make a move like that in this stock. And by the way, down here is volume. You can see the volume bars. So this is what I'm talking about, people, okay? But how do you know it? How do you know to take the trade? Here's the one-minute chart. This hit really quickly. Again, I didn't do it, but I called in the room, and some people did it. You take the trade. It's a long, and it rallies. Big move up in here. And again, what are you doing here? You're taking the trade. It's, this is 9.30. This is 9.31. Look at the time that you're out. Boom, out. I mean, you're literally in and out, in and out, in and out, boom. It's just, I mean, you would have been done with this trade in a couple of minutes, not even 15 minutes, not even 10 minutes. 
So I did not do this, but people in the room did it. If you have a risk between $1,000 and $1,200, $1,500, you would have looked to take Jack. It had a, a bigger stock because, again, this is a $70-some dollar stock. You would have bought the stock at 72. This is where I called it. Stop is at under, because you're going long, 71.25. Share size is 2,000 shares. The amount of risk is 1,500. Target, really, the first target was 74, but it flew up here over the number here, over 74.25. But I'm telling you, it went, it went higher. I mean, it actually went higher. But again, this is the move you're looking for every day. In and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, quick click. Okay. Then it did go to 75. It actually did go to 75, and it went past that. So you could have made $4,500 in this trade. Again, I didn't do this one because I want to prefer to short, but you could have. And, and, and this, again, was one trade, okay? Two and a half, two and a quarter amount of risk per the risk because you risk $1,500. For some people, this is the amount of money they would make for the entire week. But if you, if you have a goal and you say, my goal is to make $25,000 a month, you know, one or two of these, here you go. Any questions about this? Again, I prefer to short, but the nice thing is that I'm just looking for the momentum. I'm looking for the momentum, you know, created by the big money. And as soon as I see the trade set up, I take it, but you got to know what to look for ahead of time. You have to know what to look for ahead of time before the open, or you'll never get that trade. You'll never get any of these trades because they said they could set up at 930, 931, 935. So I'm predicting pre-market before the open, what stocks are going to do only a couple based on my system. Here was another one, Staples, another retailer, hit hard last week, beautiful move. This was a good short. So the stock here, again, you have, a, this is a daily chart. Going back here, you see this is February, March, April, May. Going back here, stock closed the night before. I wouldn't really call this a doji. It's too big, but you could say it is, I guess. Closed up here around 1030 something. $10 and some 30 cents opens in the morning at what? Boom. Under $9. So you get up and you rate it. And you rate it and you say, what am I going to do with this? Is it a long? Is it a short? What? Okay. And you look at it. It was a short. It was a good short, actually. And this had a huge move for the stock. Massive. Okay. You get the rally. Boom. Short it. Drop. This you say to yourself, well, this doesn't look like, like that much of a thing. It's it's 40 cents, it's 50 cents, or 60 cents, yeah, but this actually was huge. This didn't even go to the overall bigger number, which was 825, 815, 8 dollars. Still hasn't got to eight bucks, but probably will. This had a massive move in the day here in the morning before 10 o'clock that you could have made money that it didn't even matter that it went to the target or not. In fact, you could have taken the train here and got out here. But here was the money move in this. Again, time of the day. You have to know. You see some people bought this. How do I know? The price rallied. You've got green bars here. If you looked at this in the daily chart here, you might, and you didn't know what to do. If you didn't take my class, and this is how people lose money in the market, and they say, oh, woe is me. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, you know what? Then learn it. This isn't a long, but you can tell that people went long at, how do I know? The stock opened, hit over the high, and rallied. Why did the stock drop so hard and fast this big red bar? Is people getting stopped out by buying out of the low? People would try to buy these dips here. And here they try to buy them. Stock closed at the low of the day. This was a short. Later even it was a short. But I'm telling you, it's so easy to make money if you know what to do. You can't short every rally. You can't buy every buy setup like this over the high. You have to know what the gap is. Again, it goes back to the question someone was asking that earlier. It has to do with the gap and the daily chart. And if you don't know what to do here, you'll lose. If you know what to do, all the money that you want to take depends on the size of your position. So, oops, where did I go? Now, something like this, which is cheap, which is staples, again, you can take more size. Based on the buying power here, price of the stock is $879. Stop is over $886. If you risk the same amount in all your trades, $1,000 risk approximately, you could have taken 15,000 shares of this. That sounds like a lot, but trust me, you get filled. And a stock like this with volume, you get filled. You got to be able to say, I'm going to take the trade with a thousand dollar risk though. What if you only wanted to risk 500 bucks? If you did this trade, you could have made $7,350. You could have made more than your goal for the entire week if you hit it with the size. I, I was talking about this in the room 
I don't know if it was Friday or if it was today. I don't even remember anymore because all my days run together. It's like this chunking it out concept and stepping up the size, me personally, I'm going to go into the next quarter earning season and do it. Like, you know, trading now for eight years and I risk between $1,000 and $1,500 on my trades. But I'm, I, I'm in such a groove now. And I just know, even if I have a loser, I know the next three will be winners or six will be winners or whatever. And we are going to talk about one losing trade in here today so you can see that not all trades work. But I'm telling you, when you know the system and you're doing it, and, and I've been doing this for eight years, you, you, you're you fine with the risk. And I even to myself, I said, you know what, I'm stepping it up. And Staples is a very comfortable stock for me. I don't think I've ever lost money in Staples, but this actually had two trades in it, which we're going to go over both of them. But you pick a strategy, which is the gap, you zero in on it, find all the stocks that are gapping, you can pick ups or downs, I like to do the shorts, and then you use a system to rate them. Even though stocks can move all day long, they really, really have the institutional move in the morning. It's into the open. Now that could be at 9.31, it could be at 9.35, it could be at 9.45, but when I say open, I mean the first 30 minutes of the day. That's what I'm talking about because many hedge funds or banks say we've decided we're going to dump our positions in the morning. Their traders are at their desk. Or they're at their desk at 6 a.m., 7 a.m. in the morning, two and a half hours before the days come out when all the econ reports, most of the reports in the morning in the market are done at 8 and 8.30. And people are watching them. And sometimes they don't know what they're doing until after those econ reports come out. So you get new gaps then. So while the stock market is closed, which is from 4 to 9.30, stuff happens. You have post-market data and pre-market data. That's where the gap is occurring. Someone asked me a question about an intraday gap. There is no such thing. I'll show you again in a daily chart. But the gap is outside of the time that the market's open. If we didn't have it in open and closed, then there would be no such thing as a gap. Sometimes people ask me and they say about the, uh, the Forex market. Okay, the Forex market only is closed once a week. So you really would only ever be able to use my system for that once a week. You wouldn't have as many gaps. The reason the U.S. market is so great and so fantastic is the fact that you get gaps that happen every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay. So funds and institutions and brokerage trading divisions have no control over the forces that make a stock gap at the open, but they decide what they're doing actually whenever they have the criteria of what their earnings reports say or the news reports say or the econ reports say or, or sector gaps even. There were many retailers that gapped together because one, one bad report may be an earnings for something may affect everybody else in the sector, all the retailers, or you'll have it sometimes with the banks. Okay. Now here was a continuation. This was the day of the original gap in Staples. And then here's the follow through. Beautiful. I mean, look at that. So on the one minute chart in Staples, this is not even the first day. I showed you the first day. This is the second day. Stock drop fell, rallied back, set up again. You could have shorted this for two days down. Two days you could have shorted this. Another beautiful, beautiful move that you could have done with huge profit. And guess what? Same target. Same target. This actually broke and went lower, but you're looking for the same target. So the one day you could have made over seven grand in Staples, the next day you could have made $2,700 in Staples. In two days, you could have made in Staples $10,000, risking two. So that's five to one. So if you, now just listen to me here. $10,000 is a lot of money to make in two days. You had to risk two grand to do it. You did it in one stock two days in a row. Same position size, same target even, not the same entry but the same concept of the strategy, which is the gap, same stock, okay? You had the money from the first day. If the second day the trade failed, you would still been up. If you lost $1,000 on this trade the second day, you still would have been up, still would have been up six something. As it turns out, the second day in here works. So now you're up 10 something. So if you risk $2,000 to make 10, that's a five risk to reward payoff. That's really good for day trading. And that's literally, you know, almost half your goal for the entire month in two trades. That's why you can do sometimes two trades, like let's just say the third day, and I'm going to show you one in here that didn't work. This was last week. We're not there yet. But let's say you make five risk units. One trade, one day doesn't work. You lose in it, okay? 
you're still up 9,000 something. You're still made four risk units. Do you see how this works? So this is how you get to the point of actually doing it where you are making money in the market. It's not about doing a million things. If you look at one thing per day and focus, 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 with sides, you can do it. And just the problem is that many people don't, but that is exactly what I do. And it's exactly what I'm teaching people to do. So the big money at the open is what makes the move. Whether the move is in staples at a cheap price stock and it moves 30, 40 cents, or a big move is something like Target or moves a buck. Making money is about finding the correct trade, the correct directional bias consistently over and over and over again to know the direction to take. And you gotta know the directional bias. You can't go long a stock that's dropping, you'll lose. You can't short a stock that's rallying, you'll lose. People that tried to short Jack got run over like a truck. People that tried to buy the Fang, guess what? They lost, and I showed you that. Stocks that gap up are not necessarily bullish, and stocks that gap down are not necessarily bearish. Traders think, think this. Sometimes they, this gap fill concept, I don't want to get too off track here, but people believe that works. It doesn't. It just, it just doesn't work. Okay? Now, any questions while we're going along? Here, let me just quick look. So trading successfully means focusing on taking trades with institutions. That's how you're going to do it. And you want to be on the side of institutions, and it increases your odds to make profits because institutions make stock trends and the market. Institutions move stocks either up or down. And if you want to get paid, the key is to be on the side of where these institutions are taking their positions on or off. That's what you want to do. If you are trading with institutions, not only are you on the side of momentum, you're also trading with professional traders. As I was saying earlier, they're not sitting at their desk like zombies till 4 o'clock. <laughs> okay? They're just not. And you shouldn't be doing that either. So this is why this is a great job for a full-time job because you can rest the day to yourself. And if you have another job, it's great as a part-time thing you can do on the side because you have time to do the other thing. You only need 30 minutes. As an individual trader, you will be more successful if you trade like a professional and just work for yourself. And ideally, this is what you want to do. If you are like, well, you know, this might work. It's 50-50. I don't take trades like that. I never take trades like that. I say I have 100% conviction this is going to work. It's absolutely it's going to get sold off today. You can call it the footprints of big money, whatever you want to call it, you know, stock being dumped. I mean, I've heard of all kinds of things, but when I'm looking to short something, I'm saying this is going to just go like a crazy person down today. I've got to get in the trade of 100% conviction. It's going to work. There's no 50-50 in my mind. Could I lose? Yes. That's why I put in the stop. That's why I have a stop in. I have a stop in. If I take 10,000 shares of something, I have a stop in. Okay? But the point is that I have a high odds profitability profitability of that it working. I never believe 50-50 or I don't take the trade. I wouldn't take the trade with $300 risk or $200 risk if I thought it was 50-50. If it meets the criteria, 20 points or more, I'm doing it. With, I'm doing it. And if it doesn't, then I'm not. This is where the structure of the professionalism comes. You want to make 300 grand a year? I don't care what you're doing. You better be good at it. Very few jobs out there where that pay that kind of money that you're, that you stink, whatever it is, trading or anything else. So my system focuses on the daily chart of a stock to determine based on the price of the stock is being bought, sold, or shorted. And, and again, you have to look at it with a system. Now, I was talking about a trade that failed. Let's go over it. It was fossil. This is a gap data. It rated. To, you could actually have looked at to short this, but it didn't work. Now, I'm going to show you. Stock closed up here around $40. Gap tended here at $27. You get up the more, you say, let me take a look at this thing. This was an earnings. The stock actually dropped, set up, stop was over the high. This is 9.30, 9.31. If you had done this trade in here, it stopped you out. And that was it. You couldn't have done it again. It failed on the third bar of the day. So you would have lost a thousand bucks if you risk a thousand dollars. Now going back to what I was saying, say you did the two staples and you lost in the fossil, you still would have been up money. You still would have been up like nine grand. So you will have some trades that don't work by virtue of necessity of the fact that some things are, are happening in the market that are not predictable. But if you have a system that is reliable and consistent and predictable, a high percentage of the time, you can make money and win. And a lot of people ask me, I always say my system is about 70% win ratio. But I will tell you that I've had people track me in the room and say it's over 80%. Either way, it works way more than it doesn't. So you take the hits like in Fossil when they don't work. And you book the money like in the staples when they do work. So I'm going to show you here. The entry here was really here. And the stop was here, but it flew over it in this bar. Stop was 27.25. You can see, poof, 
and went right over it. So if you're risking a thousand or fifteen hundred bucks, you would have had thirty five hundred shares. You would have lost fifteen hundred dollars if you risked it in this. And it was a good gap, so you might have, but it failed. It failed at nine thirty two. That's it. You lay off again. This is something they teach you. Lay off. You're down fifteen hundred dollars. You just booked money the last two days or the last week or whatever. Stop. Pull it away. So you didn't make any money on this trade. You took a loss. This is part of it. But the criteria sets you on what you're supposed to do and also when to pull back and stop. So in that case, with the fossil, the follow through of the sell off did not happen on the live day. It happened in the gap and it didn't continue to sell off on the live day. But that stock has continued to sell off, I will tell you, ever since that gap. You could look at that as a swing train. But you're looking for the footprints of the money. They happen in the gap and then you rate it. And so if the stock rates 20 points or more per my system, you short it as a short if it gaps down. If it rates 20 points or more, you buy it as long as it gaps up. You only have to focus on what the power of money is doing. That's how you make money in the market. These people that trade penny stocks and stuff like this, I don't know how they make a dime. I really don't know how they make any money at all. And it's too much risk and too small of things with not enough volume. I want stuff that moves. Some stocks I trade are 20, $23 price points. They'll move two, three, four, five dollars in the day. That's the way you want to make money. I mean, $1,000, like I said, is a good amount of writing your mission, but I'm not risking, you know, five, 6000 So you've got to know, like, what a professional is doing and where you're taking it. And I always say in an ideal world or a perfect world, it's you don't want to have to do 100 different things, 100 different trades, 100 different strategies to make money. Now, I've been doing option trades. You can also use my method for swing trades. I day trade daily, but it's all based on one strategy. It's all based on the gap. So even the different types of trades I'm taking, like options or day trades, are based on the gap. One strategy, not 100 trades and not trading all day. And again, like I said, I'm, I'm done every day by 10 a.m. And, and I don't care what the market's doing. I look at the market. I love to look at the market. And I talk about the market. I do market videos. And I look at the QQQs and the SPY. But whether the market's rallying or, or falling, it doesn't matter to me. I might hold something longer if it's falling, but that's about it. The idea is to get out there and enjoy your life and not sit in front of a computer all day because people tend to give money back to the market. This is not a gambling mentality. If you look at it like a professional person, you will get there. And many people just don't have the time or energy to lose thousands of dollars struggling to try to make money, teaching themselves how to trade. I did do that for myself. All right. It ended up working out. But what if it hadn't? That's a hard road for people to just throw themselves in the market with their money and then just, you know, take gambling pot shots at things. This is a serious business. It's a serious business because every time you take a trade, there's a potential you could lose. But every time you take a trade, there's a potential you could win. So what do you want to do? Do you want to win or do you want to lose? I want to lose. So I set out to create something that has a high probable odds of working that I could do one trade a day and be done quickly. I don't have my money at risk for a lot of time. And I'm so nimble on that one minute chart that I can make several thousand dollars a minute. And, it, and, and it's fantastic. But you, you want to learn what you're doing and take a class instead of throwing your money in the market because you can lose if you don't know what to do. And it, it is something that you have to be an expert out. So I teach a class. The class is called the Golden Gap Course. You don't have to worry about the market. You're done every day in the morning by 10. You only have one strategy no matter what you use it for. And, and yes, this philosophy of enjoying life is actually very important. For years and years and years, for 17 plus years, I did mortgages and I hated my life. I had no free time. I don't know when I, I realized it, when the mortgage industry started falling or, or when it was. I had a client call me on Christmas Day, Christmas Day about a mortgage. I said, I'm with my family. I'm like, this is it. I'm just done. You know, you get to a point and you feel like you have no life in real estate. And that's where I was at. And I said, I got to find something else to do. So, you know, Saturday and Sunday, if I'm not teaching a class, I'm off. It's a beautiful weekend in New York this weekend. I, I could enjoy it. I, I'm not chained to, my, chained to my job, okay? So the Golden Gap course that I teach is a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. It teaches you how to enter and exit the trades, but you've got to learn the rating system. Then you learn the entries. I teach six in the class. I teach targets. I teach you how to get the entries right for the risk to reward. And this is a huge benefit of being in my room. I'm very good at entries. The course teaches you price analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. So it's an advanced class. The fact that you've never traded before, if you've never done it, doesn't mean you can't learn. You can learn anything. You can learn anything at all. And in fact, one of the things I teach in the class, if you want, I'll email you the class outline. You will learn how to uh, maximize 
your potential within yourself and your brain. You will push yourself. You know, your brain is like a muscle. You push it and you exercise it and you get smarter and smarter and smarter and smarter and smarter. And guess what? That's how you think you turn around and you're making $300,000 a year. You know, you want to be out there and doing it. You can do it. You just got to learn it and you push yourself, but you can do it. Is what I'm saying. But you got to be smart about it. And part of being smart about it is learning first before you take the risk. And in fact, learning is more important than anything. Sometimes I talk to people that don't have the money for the class and a trading account. I say, you know what? Just take the class. Practice on a demo for a little while. Get used to it. Learn the information, you know, before you run out and open up an account. I mean, if you want to, that's fine. But I'm saying, you know what? The most important thing is learning. The course teaches a more proficient way to read support and resistance in the right direction, which point in fact, Faye was a great example for that. Target two. And the course teaches you to focus on one good strategy in a detailed manner so you become a good trader. My class is a complete system. You would never have to take another class but mine if you wanted to learn how to successfully day trade gaps in the market. And I truly believe that it's one of the most powerful strategies that exist, whether you do it for day trading or overnight. But as far as day trading goes, you get so much momentum into them because of the institutional sell-offs for shorts or the buying for longs that you, you can make money. I mean, you can make money. Otherwise, you're pretty much scalping and trying to pull 10, 20 cents out of something every day, which would drive me nuts. Even the stocks many days that aren't gathering that have volume and tons of shares, you're, you're looking, you're like scalping them. That would drive me nuts. I like the money and I want it to move. You get the move in your favor that happens big with the institutions moving it. Like I said, it's the only thing that can possibly move it. So my class is a two-day course. It's this weekend, May 21st and 22nd. It is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play a stock sort of professional bearish gaps. I focus on the shorts. So the class is live online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it or retakes are free. So if you want to trade before the next quarterly earnings season, which is third quarter, you would want to do the class this weekend, learn it, get acclimated to the strategy with small size or a demo. Or if you're ready to go right after the class and think you can do it immediately with this kind of risk, go for it. I'd be in the room though and get my trade direction on the trades and the calls. Let me just see if we have any questions here. No, we're okay. We're all good. I knew we could write anything down if you have any questions. It's just want to say a couple things here before we close out. If you think some of the great things in your life and you look back to the when they came, okay, when they happened, when they actually came into your life, what if you had made a different choice and you decided not to go down that road? You know, a lot of times we get to our lives and we have choices. We all have choices, things we can do. I could take, you could take my class, you could take another class. You could take, you could take a, a training class. You could go out and learn something else to do for extra money. I can't think of anything right now, but you could just get a part-time job, whatever. You have many choices in life. When you think back to the things that really were pivotal decisions that you made in your life, good choices. When you look back and you say, what was the mindset at the time that I made the decision to go down this road versus this road or vice versa? Guess what? What about at times in your life where you made mistakes and you made a decision to go down one road and then it turned out to be a mistake and you wish you would have gone down the other road? You know, go back and think of that. Remember that time in your life when you were in a thought process where you made a bad choice or a good choice and you think about it and you're like, if I could have done X, Y, Z back two years ago or three years ago or one year ago, where would I be now? If I had done something differently, not made, like not made that mistake, or if I had not gone down the road that I did, that would have put me on the road that I am now. What price would you put on it? If someone had said to me, and this is, this is crazy, but I'm going to tell you this. If someone had said to me, you know, it would cost you, Melissa, this much money, you know, to, that you would have to lose in the market before you'd learn your system at the time, this is years and years ago, I, I have no idea what I would have said. Because at the time I thought, well, I'm really smart. I'll figure this thing out quickly. But it took me three years. I probably actually looking back may have said no, that I wasn't, that I wouldn't do it, that I wouldn't lose the money or spend three years of my life. But it didn't work that way. I just threw myself in the market and time went on and on and on. And it took me a long time to figure it out. So that's why, you know, I charge $5,000 for the class, but it's still a lot cheaper than going into the market yourself and making mistakes and screwing up and spending years of your life. And sometimes, you know, that's what it is about. You take the leap and the leap is a leap of faith. 
and you say, I believe that I can put myself in a better path in my life. And I believe that a positive outcome can come from this and that I've made good decisions in the past and they worked out for me. And if I hadn't taken those chances, I wouldn't be where I was today. For example, for me, if I hadn't taken the chances that I did in the market, I wouldn't be where I was today. Pat saying, yes, it's 5,000 US dollars. 49.99 is the class. And I, I allow free retakes. It's a 16 hour course, Saturday and Sunday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. And again, it's online. If you want to sign up, you need to email me for the sign up papers. You want to email me and sign up as soon as possible to secure your spot. I don't have 200 people in, in, in the class. I have a very individual teaching, training, mentoring for people. So I don't take a large group of people in each class because I want to be able to answer everyone's questions and not, not have the class till midnight. Some classes, I think the longest class I had went on till 8 o'clock. This was years ago. And I said, you know what? I have to take a certain number of people each class because otherwise it's, it's too long of a day for me to teach. But the, so the sooner you sign up, the better. But you get to retake it. If you don't get everything the first time, want to go back, you can. And so this is a nice testimonial here. You can go and, and read about the testimonials here on that website. Paul, if you want to put the Investimonials website in the room, you can go read some stuff, some testimonials from prior students. But I'm teaching a class also in June. It's called the Wealth Manifestation class. This is an important class that teaches you how to think about money. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a motivational class per se, although it is. But it talks about your brain. It talks, it talks about some motivational things. And it talks about money and how it can have a negative or positive impact on your life so that, you know, you make the right choices. And this is really important if you are doing something in your life that involves finance and specifically risk because you're risking money in the market. So this will be a day course during the week, 12 to 3. I don't have the date yet, but it will be in June. You will get this class for free if you sign up for the Golden Gap this weekend. Now, does anyone have any questions for me? Again, this is the website if you want to get some testimonials. Let me look down there. Does anyone else have any questions? And if you would like a trial of the training room, you can email me at melissa at the stockswish.com for a trial. Then sit in on the room this week. I, I have some people that are doing really well with me. Uh, I talked about Trader Gow earlier who had made her goal in the first seven days of the month. And I have to email her. I'm not sure how long she's been with me. I, I know it's at least two years. It, it, it might be more than two years that she's been with me. And, and I've, I've taught people from all over the place, all over the world, women and men. Some people are young and some people are older. Some people are retired. Some people work. You know, you work it out, you make it work. If, if you could know that by June 1st, or let's just say you, you're brand new. Let's say it took you to July 1st to make this kind of money in the market. Would you be willing to invest the time and energy and effort and money in learning it? If, if you knew you could make 25 grand per month starting July 1st, would you do it? What if you're really slow? Never looked at a chart before in your life. What if you might need till August 1st, September 1st? Wouldn't it still be worth it? September, October, November, December? If you can make an extra 100 grand trading the last four months, even if it's going to take you time, redoing the class a couple of times, doing the practice trains with me, not risking $1,000 quite yet because you're still new, would, wouldn't you do it? You know? You have to decide if you're committed to actually getting to a better place in your life financially. Because if you're not where you wanted me, then how are you going to get there? The commitment level, the mental commitment is required. And the financial commitment, obviously, to pay $5,000 for the class. But you can do it. And I mentor people and I'm helping people. And there may be a time when, when, when I'm not having the time to mentor people as much. But now I do. I have many, many projects going on. But this... This is something that I really value, which is my class. I take a lot of pride in what I do, and I've touched people's lives. I mean, I've taught people how to trade and make money in the market, and that, I mean, that's fantastic. Many places out there teach people stuff, but not how to make money. I mean, I, I, mean, I consistently have people in my room that are doing well now for years making money, like, for real. It's pretty great. I have to do more trader videos and put them on my YouTube site of other people besides myself to help people see they can do it. I think it's, 
I think people know that I do it to follow me, but they're not quite certain if they can. But I'm telling you, I'm a regular person and other people are regular people and doing it too. You can do it. And, and what the time element is for you to make 300K a year, I don't know because I don't know you that well. You can call and talk to me or ask me questions, but I'll help you along the way. But if you knew you started on this road, the sooner you start on the road, the sooner you're going to make the money. <laughs> Whether it takes you a week or a month or six months or three months or two months or one month or one week or a year. If you knew you could get to that point, the, sooner, the, the longer it takes for you to get on the road, then the longer it takes for you to make the money. And then you lose momentum. And then what if I'm not teaching the class anymore? You know, these are the things you have to think about and go back and look at the good decisions you've made in the life and the ones that you regret and, and, and do some soul searching. you got seven more months left in the year. And you want to make it good and financially uh, stable for you. A lot of people have stress in their lives. I'll say this one last thing. I know we're running out of time here, but a lot of people have stress in their lives and in their relationships and marriages. I mean, I'm single. I'm not married. So it's just, it's all me. Whatever I make or I spend, it's all on me. But people that are married have big problems sometimes with finances and relationships. And, and I hate to see that for people, okay? I hate to see that for people. You want to have the least amount of stress that you can in your life. Yes, sometimes it means you got to do something different, get out of the box, take a class, learn something, spend money. But if it involves less stress in your life in the long run or even the short run, why not do it? It just takes too much of a toll on you the longer that financial stresses lag on people. Okay, everyone, anyone, any questions? Any questions from anyone? Good group today. Fabulous. All right, thanks so much for having me, everybody. Thank you. Email me if you're interested in the class or you'd like a trial to the training room. Thanks, Kathy. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you so much for your time and your participation here today.